this concept of collect the inst per continuity of the spiritual movement through an institution actually started from Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Jiva Goswami gave the concept. Uh, this morning, Banu Maharaj also mentioned that in the class that Jiva Goswami in his Sandarbha actually he mentions about Vishwa Vaishnav Raj Sabha, the royal assembly of the worldwide Vaishnava community. The royal assembly of the Vaishnavas worldwide. So, but Jiva Goswami gave the concept, but he did not establish that concept. That time preaching was not really going on so effectively. They themselves were just preparing the movement for future through their writings in Vrindavan. Just a handful of Goswamis were establishing the movement at that time. But uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur actually picked up that mission, took up that mission. Bhakti Vinod Thakur actually started to revive Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. <coughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement was practically lost 250 years after his disappearance by all kinds of uh, abominable presentation of the Abhu Sampradayas. The Abhu Sampradayas in simple words can say they not only distorted Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings and they are passing their own ideas, own philosophy, if at all there was any, in the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And many times their activities were simply based on breaking the four regulative principles. Dharma stands on four regulative principles and this upper sampradayas, uh, their activities are mainly based on breaking those regulative principles. Uh, intoxication, illicit sex. They may not have been eating meat, but they were eating fish uh, and gambling. So as a result of that, educated, cultured, people were not at all inclined to get lined up with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. They were actually more inclined to reject Mahaprabhu. They didn't want to have anything to do with this movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At that time, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur actually started this revival work of Mahaprabhu's mission. He actually presented to the world, to the educated, intelligent community of India at that time, that what a glorious gift, a spiritual gift Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave to this world. But the situation was so bad, so unfortunate at that time, that while Bhakti Vinod Thakur was looking for Chaitanya Charitamrita in the whole of Bengal, he couldn't find a single copy. Can you imagine not a single copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita was available at that time? And eventually Bhaktivinoda Thakur found one copy from Orissa. <laughs> and uh, on the basis of Chaitanya Charitamrita and other scriptures, Bhaktivinoda Thakur started to establish Mahaprabhu's sublime pristine preachings, teachings. <coughs> and then Bhakti Vinod Thakur gave this concept, which was actually the revival of Jiva Goswami's Vishwavishnu Raj Sabha in the name, in the form of his Nam Hat. Nam Hat, the marketplace where the holy name can be purchased, where the holy name is distributed, holy name is sold. And and in that, he gave a very specific structure. And in the structure, which role did he assume for himself? Uh, the role that he assumed for himself is the role of a sweeper. Uh, to keep 
uh, the marketplace clean. Uh, clean from all the uh, undesirable, unwanted, abominable stuff that pollutes that marketplace. And then <coughs> Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur took that blueprint and he established his Gauriya Mart. The Gauriya Mart is the, is the culmination, is the, uh, is the manifestation of Bhakti Vinod Thakur's uh, Namhat concept. And those days in India where communication was very, very stilted, uh, Bhakti Vinod, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur established uh, 64 temples. Now, what an achievement! Like in, and not only that, he attracted the intelligent class of people, very, 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 very educated, cultured, influential people, became his followers. And uh, this is how. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur established Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sankirtan movement once again. But unfortunately, soon after Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's disappearance, Gauriya Mart disintegrated for the internal conflict. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur asked them to work collectively, but unfortunately, they started to fight. In Gauriya Mart, you know how, how many days it took for them to start fighting over properties and rooms and so forth. Three days after Bhakti Siddhanta Shashi Thakur's disappearance. They were staying in the same Mart, uh, Bhag Bazar Gauriya Mart, but there were two groups there and they were fighting. Uh, and Prabhupada pointed out uh, that this is the influence of Kali. This is how Kali enters. Uh, nothing, Prabhupada pointed out that nothing can hurt this movement from outside. It's only from inside that this movement can be harmed. The conflict of the conflict between devotees. So that's why Prabhupada was so emphatic that we work collectively. And <coughs> Another consideration of this collective management is that uh, Prabhupada pointed out that Kali actually is another name of quarrel. Kalishya Kalaha Priya. The description of Kali is Karala Vadana Krudha Kalishya Kalaha Priya. There's another line, I don't want to repeat that, because, anyway, so, so at least we can understand that, that Kali is very fierce looking, vicious looking, and it's very cruel, very fierce, and uh, is very fond of quarrel, it just creates quarrel. And what causes the quarrel? Then we have to go back to Kali's father and mother. Do you know who are Kali's parents? Anger and envy. And you can see what causes quarrel? Anger and envy. That's why Mahaprabhu's instruction is Trinadopi Sumi Chena Taroropi Shahishnada. That is to counteract the influence of Kali. This is the best method. Become humble. What is there to desire in this material nature? Na dhanam, na janam, na sundari. That is, that is a Vaishnava's mood. I don't want anything in this material nature. In the material nature, there may be this attraction of Wealth, attraction of beautiful women, the attraction of 
name and fame. But I don't want any of them. That's a Vaishnav. And a poor Vaishnav is a personification of humility. He doesn't care, he doesn't want anything for himself. And at the same time, he's tolerant. And that is the way to overcome anger. Tolerate. After all, well, others will make mistakes, others will harm us, others will do so many things. Tolerate it, Think, knowing well that this is material nature, it's, it's, it cannot be avoided. Just tolerate. So that is, that is how we have to overcome this influence of Kali. And to succumb to the influence of Kali is quarrel. Quarrel stemming from envy and anger. Why he has so much? Why he is being recognized? Why he is getting all the facilities? Why not me? And that sparks the fire of, that ignites the fire of anger. And the result is quarrel. And when there is quarrel, then everything will be lost. We see how this Kali is, with the progress of Kali, the world is becoming divided. During Parikshit Maharaj's time, there was, one, there was one government. Parikshit Maharaj was the ruler and that was the standard. Uh, one ruler, uh, Sarvabhoma Samrat, Ekachatra Samrat, was the ruler of the earth plan entire earth planet, including the oceans. Sa Sagara Dharitri. Uh, Dharitri means earth planet and Sa Sagara means along with the ocean. So not, not only the land portion of the planet, including the ocean as well. And we are seeing how the world has become divided in just in less than 5,000 years time. And the world is becoming more and more fragmented. Prabhupada used to walk in New York uh, by the United Nations building in Fifth Avenue and uh, Prabhupada used to say that each time I come here uh, I see the number of flags have increased. So it's supposed to be United Nation but they are not uniting the nation, they are dividing the nation. The nation is becoming more and more divided. And about India also Prabhupada pointed out that there was a time just a few hundred years back uh, India's territory actually spread all the way up to Iran. Afghanistan was a part of India. Uh, that was you know, maybe 1500 years ago. And on the eastern side it was up to Java, Sumatra, Bali, Borneo, all those places are parts of India. But uh, India is shrinking. And then we saw just about 60 years back, 65 years back, the nation India was divided into India and Pakistan. Uh, and then Prabhupada said, the next will be Sikhistan. And it's, a way, it's on the way to be happening. Now the Sikhs in Punjab are demanding a Khalistan. Prabhupada called Sikhistan, they just the name is different but the concept is the same. Uh, so in this way, <coughs> Srila Prabhupada pointed out that how due to the effect of Kali, the world is becoming divided. And even we can see in the smaller scale, the families are becoming divided. Uh, previously, uh, even in my childhood, I saw most of the families were joint families. The whole family were together. All the brothers used to live together. But now, as, the, as soon as they get married, uh, they 
break away from the family. And that also doesn't last for very long. Pretty soon husband and wife also become divided. Uh, so in this way Kali's, actually, Kali's way of spreading his influence by dividing. And Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement is uniting. Sankirtan is actually the process of unification. Unite. In this way we can see how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is actually meant to counteract the influence of Kali. And for that we need an institution when many people get together and trying to achieve something common with a common interest, then they have to become united in under uh, authority structure and that is the institution. And in that authority structure, uh, the institution, Srila Prabhupada is the head. The institution also is like a body. Actually everything has a body uh, according to the Vedic understanding. You know about Vastu, you know what is the Vastu science? The body of the structure, body of a uh, residence or any shape, any building uh, has, a, has a, is a body. And the body has its head, body has its chest, arms, legs, eyes, mouth. You know, what's the uh, very common consideration? Was the mouth of the body? Was the mouth of the building? The mouth of the building is the door, entrance. And the eyes, the windows are the eyes of the body. <laughs> And the head of the body is in certain direction, legs are in the opposite direction, and so forth. Similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam is a body. Srimad Bhagavatam is the body of Krishna. The two can first two cantos are the legs. The third and fourth canto are the thighs. Fifth canto is the abdomen. Sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam is the chest of Krishna. Seventh and eighth cantos are his arms. Ninth canto is his neck and tenth canto is his face. Smiling lotus face. Eleventh canto is his forehead and twelfth canto is his head. So this is the body of Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna himself. Not only the human body has a shape uh, or an animal body, everything has a body. Similarly, the institution of ISKCON has a body. So here we have to understand that in that body of ISKCON, Srila Prabhupada is the head. And <clears throat> what is the most important part of the body? Next, I mean, uh, along with that concept, the heart uh, and the heart of the body of Iskon is Krishna. Then arms actually do what the head decides. Uh, the execution is done by the arms and the arms is the management structure that Srila Prabhupada gave. GBC, temple president, departmental heads and so forth. And what is the belly of the body of Iskon? <laughs> the belly of the body? The fun is, is the food. <laughs> where do, they, where do, they, do we put the food? To the belly. And what's the belly of that body of Iskon? The temples. Whatever we do must go to the temple. Temples are the units that Srila Prabhupada gave. Very clear understanding. Whatever we do, we must do it through the temple. And then the legs on which the whole body stands are the devotees. So, so this is how the body of Iskon can be perceived. Srila Prabhupada is the founder of Acharya, there is no doubt about that. Because Prabhupada is the founder of the institution of ISKCON. No one will ever uh, question that. 
Srila Prabhupada is the founder of his school. But Acharya means the guru of the institution. That is also uh, Prabhupada's uh, position permanently established through this concept. Srila Prabhupada is the guru of his school. And in order to establish that point, we have Srila Prabhupada's books. Srila Prabhupada's guru teaches, guru's teachings are the foundation of the institution. And we can see Srila Prabhupada has given his teachings permanently established in his books. And whatever a loyal follower of Srila Prabhupada does in ISKCON is on the basis of Srila Prabhupada's books. We give the classes, Srimad Bhagavatam classes, on the basis of Srila Prabhupada's books. We preach on the basis of Srila Prabhupada's books. And Srila Prabhupada's books are actually the, <coughs> the basis. If we deviate from that, then immediately everyone will question, what's happening? Where, where does it say in Prabhupada's books? So in this way, Srila Prabhupada's position has been established as the founder Acharya of Iskand permanently. And in the GBC also we have a, we have a resolution that Srila Prabhupada's, Prabhupada is the preeminent Shiksha Guru of Iskand for all devotees for all times. Srila Prabhupada therefore is the Acharya of Iskand. Through the founder Acharya, this two concept is becoming clearly established. Founder and Acharya. About the importance or the necessity of an institution, uh, yesterday Gauranga Prabhu gave a very wonderful example. Uh, he, not yet, yeah, yesterday only, yeah in the plenary session. I thought it was a brilliant example. He gave the example of a bullet. If you take a bullet and throw it on, at somebody, what will be the effect? Hardly any. But when the bullet is put on a gun, and then you pull the trigger, <laughs> then what happens? So our endeavors uh, becomes magnified by many, many times when we function through the institution. And you can see that also. Like, say for example, many of you have come from far off places. You came to Mayapur. You didn't have to make any arrangement for Sadhu Sangha. Right? It is through the institution that this uh, arrangement has been made. The institution uh, made all the arrangements. All you had to do is buy a ticket and come to Calcutta Airport. And the rest was done by the institution. Your conveyance from the airport, your accommodation, your prashad, and all the programs. Now just consider, if you had to do it yourself, would it be possible? Uh, of course, if you're a millionaire, then probably it would have been possible. But how many of us have that kind of ability? So that is the effect of the institution. Uh, although our effort may be rather insignificant, but when it is channelized through the institution, it takes an inconceivable dimension. So, <clears throat> anyway, now I'll try to run through quickly. Uh, uh, because yesterday, our, fortunately, there was no class afterwards and our question-answer session went on for one hour and I had to stop it. So I was thinking today also I would give at least half an hour for question-answer, but I already have covered. Oh no, I have only 15 minutes. Huh? Huh? Okay, so let me <laughs> run through quickly. Yeah, uh, <coughs> yeah. and uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, wanted us to remain in that institution. Uh, 
and to secure our position, our situation in the institution, Prabhupada was very emphatic and I personally consider that three instructions of Prabhupada are very, very important in this respect. One instruction is, no matter whatever happens, don't ever leave Iskand. Don't leave Iskand. This was a very clear instruction from Srila Prabhupada. I'll give you the background of this instru instru instruction also. It was in 77 in Vrindavan. One prominent sannyasi disciple of Srila Prabhupada, I'll mention his name also. This was Madhudvisa Prabhu, who was a leader. Uh, the Guru, I'm sorry, Sannasi GBC at that time. He gave up his Sannas and got married and he left. Then he was brought to Srila Prabhupada in 77 and Satsarup Maharaj brought him to Prabhupada's room and Prabhupada told him, why did you leave? He said, you got married, so what? <laughs> And he pointed out to other householder devotees there. And Prabhupada said, he is married, he is married, he is married. Uh, so you got married, so what? Why did you leave? And then Prabhupada said, no matter whatever happens, don't ever leave his country. And it's so wonderful that Madhudvisa Prabhu took that instruction of Srila Prabhupada to heart. And he is back in his corner. He's so sincerely serving. He's in Los Angeles. Uh, very, very wonderful devotee. He used to be, he used to lead beautiful kirtan. And he still does lead beautiful kirtans. <coughs> and the second one is your love for me will be shown how you cooperate with each other. The background of this instruction also, during that time when Prabhupada, in 77 when Prabhupada's health condition was not so good, when devotees used to write, many, many devotees used to write letters, pouring their emotions in those letters. And one day, uh, the Tamar Krishna Maharaj was reading one of the letters, a devotee is very wonderfully expressing his emotions through the letter. And he mentioned that he would, he is prepared to give his longevity, his life, in order for Prabhupada to stay longer in this planet. I mean, when I read that, when I heard that, I was so impressed. But you know what, what Prabhupada's, Prabhupada's response was? Then Prabhupada said, your actual love for me will be shown by how you cooperate with each other. Not just these words, Prabhupada, I am prepared to all give my life for you and uh, you stay longer at the exchange of my life. No. Uh, Prabhupada's instruction was, your real love for me will be shown by how you cooperate with each other. Because Prabhupada knew that it is through our cooperation only that this movement will continue. And the third instruction was the GBC is the ultimate managing authority. This also, in this respect, I had my personal experience with Srila Prabhupada. I mentioned at the beginning of the class that Prabhupada, I asked Prabhupada about the Goryamat and Prabhupada mentioned that Goryamat actually disintegrated because they did not follow that instruction of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. They did not want to, they did not follow that instruction of collective management through the governing body concept. And then Prabhupada said, and always consider that the GBC is the ultimate managing authority. Abide by the GBC. 
And there had been occasions, there had been occasions when we faced difficulties. I remember very distinctly at one time, uh, one of our gurus fell down, that was in 85. His fall down became exposed, he became exposed. And then he was removed from his position as a guru and GBC. But then in 86, during the GBC meeting, through sheer political maneuvering, that person was reinstated in his position as a guru and GBC. And I was very concerned, I was very hurt, I was rather shocked that such a thing happened, because I was right in the middle of it. I was seeing how all this political manufacturing was going on. And at that time, I actually thought that I'll leave this world. But then I remembered this instruction of Srila Prabhupada. No matter whatever happens, don't leave it, don't leave this world. Your love for me will be shown how you cooperate with each other. And GBC is the ultimate managing authority. And I consider they are the ultimate managing authority, so whatever they decide, I will follow. And I, that's what actually saved me. And then, two and a half months after that, uh, within two and a half months' time, that personality was gone and those who were propping him up through political maneuvering, they also uh, left his kind. So in, in this way we can see, just by following these three instructions, at least my spiritual life was secured. And so this is what Srila Prabhupada wanted. And in this way we must recognize that ISKCON is the institution that has been organized, established by Srila Prabhupada by the divine arrangement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and it is through this ISKCON that Krishna Consciousness movement is going to spread all over the world in every town and village fulfilling Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's prediction. And in order to uphold the institution, in order to keep the institution together, we need Srila Prabhupada's position to be established properly as the founder Acharya and the GBC, which is actually the body which is meant to execute Srila Prabhupada's will. Generation after generation, these uh, body of devotees will come who will execute Srila Prabhupada's body in the form of GBCs. And if we have these two, two concepts clearly established, ISKCON will be there at least for 10,000 years to come, spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world, fulfilling Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's prediction. Thank you very much. All glory is to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Does anybody have any question? In this uh, presentation, you men mentioned, we all agree on this, but I would like to understand better that Sila Prabhupada is the Siksha Guru of all of us. And Siksha Guru, as I understand, is giving us instructions. And of course, everything is given in Sila Prabhupada's books, but still, I, I don't understand well how is our Siksha Guru if we, if we cannot directly communicate with him. Is Rupa Goswami your Shiksha Guru? Yes. Then, are you directly communicating with him? Uh, you, are communic you are actually taking his instructions. That's what makes him a Shiksha And Srila Prabhupada, although not physically present, but through his Vani, through his instructions, through his teachings, he will always be there. Uh, give the mic to... Thank you, 
，想那个就是有搞政治阴谋，把这个哆啰的轱辘又扶上来那个情况。我想问，现在的 GPC 这个、这种情况还会会不会发生？ Thank you, Maras, for your nice instructions. You just mentioned the case uh, happened in 1995. I just wonder, such situation will it happen again nowadays? Well, it is happening. Yeah, gurus are having spiritual difficulties, and you know when they fall down, you know they have to step down. Well, then Krishna will take action as it happened at that time. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj, for wonderful presentation. Uh, on the third principle, Lord Shiva Prabhupada says, consider the GBC to be ultimate managerial authority. Uh, he did not say spiritual. Can you? There's a conflict. Sometimes there's a discussion between managerial <laughs> and spirituals. Can you enlighten a little bit more in your detail? <laughs> Thank you. Well, <laughs> managerial, spiritual. In India, we are actually dealing with another consideration. That's the legal authority. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> well, ultimately it is all spiritual because it is a spiritual institution. What the leaders of this movement are trying to do is to spiritually uphold and direct this institution. Spiritually hold it together and direct it. That's why we have a very simple and very clear spiritual program. Follow the four regulative principles. Right? And so you know, we are not managing the institution through some, uh, through some uh, 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 managerial acumen, right? Like, it's not like a corporate uh, structure. It is a spiritual structure and the recognition of the leaders come from the spiritual <coughs> spiritual accomplishments. At least during Prabhupada's time that was the criteria for the for becoming leaders in ISKCON. Those who achieved for Prabhupada, Prabhupada met them, the GBCs. Therefore those days all these leaders were big achievers. I mean they had inconceivable achievements actually. And in order to impress Srila Prabhupada the devotees were also trying to go out of their way and achieve things. You know, like, uh, here is one of our God brothers, Shudhi Prabhu, uh, at the age of 17. You were 17 at that time? 19. 19. In order to show, in order to impress Srila Prabhupada or get some recognition from Srila Prabhupada, at the age of 19, he started to look around and see where he could go. because. He found that the whole world has been taken over. You know, devotees have gone to different parts of the world. So uh, he saw Africa was not touched. So he decided to go to South Africa. And he, a 19-year-old boy, actually started the movement in South Africa. So these, are, these were the kind of achievers uh, that were during Prabhupada's time. And of course, nowadays also, their devotees are achieving all kinds of wonderful things. And those who are achieving, we have to give them the recognition. Uh, give them the position because they're achieving something. Then they'll be inspired to achieve more. But if we don't recognize and reward their achievements, then there will be difficulty. Uh, the progress will be stifled. Okay, the question is that we know that 
uh, when one renders some service to Krishna, that always remains intact. There is no loss or diminution. But then still, why after rendering 30-40 years of service, one goes away? Well, his, whatever he has done will, you understand if I say in English, whatever he has done will be recognized by Krishna. But his going away is his own decision. He decides to go away. So if somebody wants to go away, Krishna tells him, don't go, don't go, don't go. But if he wants to go away, then what can be done? And the reason why one goes away from Krishna consciousness, why one goes away from the community of devotees, is Vaishnava Parada. Krishna tolerates everything. When one accepts Krishna, Krishna makes it a point to keep him safe and secured at his lotus feet. But if he commits offenses to the Vaishnavas, then Krishna cannot do anything about that. So we have to understand that it is due to Vaishnava Parada that one falls away from Krishna consciousness. Not previous karma. Karma, there is no room for karma in Krishna consciousness. Karma is washed away. Aham tvam sarva papibhyo moksha isham. Not karma, but Vaishnam aparat. Okay. So, good, good timing to finish it. Oh, Acha. Yes, Vasudev Prabhu. Maybe you can turn the camera to no. you. <laughs> um, one question I have is um, how to explain that Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur drew to him some very exalted souls and so did Shiva Prabhupada. But on the other hand, we see that the world is uh, populated by lots of very large institutions that are governed, governed by some sort of governing body, bodies and they are doing rather well for the purpose of making money. <clears throat> Why would it be that uh, in a spiritual institution the ego seems to be even greater and more of a problem good. for very good. These yeah. institutions to run than the karmis are doing? Yeah. You see, the karmis get their reward, get a tangible reward through money, position, fringe benefits, right, when they accomplish things. And that is what inspires them uh, to continue further. But the problem with Krishna consciousness is, with the spiritual institution, our reward doesn't come in the form of any tangible uh, our, our form. It doesn't come in the form of money, it doesn't come in the form of women, it doesn't come in the form of position. It comes in the form of our internal joy. So unless and until one experiences a joy, uh, it will be difficult for him to appreciate his involvement in Krishna consciousness. Uh, like, you know, things would have been different, you know, like for some achievement, if there was financial rewards. Oh, you have done something, come, here is $20,000. <laughs> But in ISKCON, you know, we don't have any such reward. The reward comes in the form of recognition by the Vaishnavas and recognition by Krishna. So, if I may, uh, we, we do preach that uh, this is a joyful process. And uh, the recognition is there. We get recognition, if nothing else. So, if we get these things, then why? My question remains. It, you may get it, but if you don't appreciate it, then what to do? Like how it comes? First it comes in the form of klesha gni. Suffering is gone. Right? Shubhada, auspiciousness, uh, comes in, in our life. Mm. And this is how it ultimately goes into uh, the transcendental bliss. But the thing is, you know, initially we, began, we appreciate, oh, my suffering condition is gone. Uh, I have uh, gone, you know, I have become uh, 
free from my my poverty is gone uh, I don't have to struggle for you know make, make my both ends meet but then gradually we forget that rather we start to think why he has this big position why don't I have look how much money he is making and I I'm just a little brahmachari <laughs> struggling to maintain my sadhana. Uh, so we forget, you know, how the suffering condition has been mitigated. And because of that, you know, our appreciation uh, is not there. And that is why uh, we fail to recognize the bliss that is there in Krishna consciousness. Yes, Kshruti Prabhu. On that point, Prabhupada, it looked like Prabhupada almost was able to bring all of his god brothers back together. In 72, I was here. And when he laid the cornerstone, Prabhupada brought all of his god brothers here. And it was brilliant the way he said it, because they all, we did the fire sacrifice, and we went in and laid the cornerstone and put the dirt in. And then Prabhupada said, now that we're all here together, he says, from today forward, instead of working as individual maps, we're going to do as Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati wanted us to do. We're going to f form a governing body commission, and from today forward, we'll be one movement. And they all went jai, and I thought, wonderful. But Prabhupada didn't say maybe or should we. He just said, from today forward, we'll be one movement again and, and do it. And I was amazed that even though they all agreed... They didn't follow that. No, they, they didn't do it, though. Yeah. It looked like that's what was going to happen. Okay. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. Gold Premanande. Yeah.